Okay, hi guys, Johnny Fulcher here. I've uh, been asked by a few of my friends to um, make a video on stroke pool, so here you go. Finally set up, I'm going to have a go. Um, what I'm going to do is just talk my way through a few wrecks of 14-1 uh, and hopefully you'll find it interesting. Okay, so let's get going. So I've just chucked the balls out and I have a pretty straightforward break shot to start off with. If I look at this, I can see that the white's going to be colliding with the top side of the 15 first. That's going to send it back up table. So there's two, there's two kind of textbook ways of playing this. One is to shoot with draw and come right back up table. You've got to know what you're doing because you've got to know that the angle you've got is not going to collide with the two and bring the white into this corner. The safer option is to try, try to play it with a medium pace stun run through and just pop up here and then use the run through to break the white in the middle of the table. That's the option I like, so let's have a go. It's kind of a one tip stun run through and a medium pace. I could have hit that a little harder, the white would have come a bit further out. <coughs> but this worked alright. Okay, once we have the table open, we're looking at uh, we're not thinking about the end game, we're not thinking about break balls. The only thing we're thinking about is opening things up so that we can run the rack, okay? So we're looking at where the clusters are. We've got a cluster here, the one goes, but then after that I've got this cluster of three balls, none of which goes, maybe the four goes in here. It's pretty tight. And I have this cluster of 12 and 14 here that I need to fix. They're not a combination, so I'm going to have to move them at some stage. I can do that off this cushion, can collide with the 14 on the way back up, or I can come down from one of these balls, collide with the 14 on the way down. So we'll have to decide what's the best way to do this. So we're looking at my opening ball here. I don't really have much option. I've got more or less a straight in two to the far corner. This gives me the option to play shape on the 11. Okay, what that does is allows me to just go straight into these guys and open the whole thing up. It's questionable whether that's a good move right now, because by doing that I'm, I might be pushing these balls towards these guys and tying things up a bit more, but if you do create a problem, you can, you know, you can fix it later. So it's better to do that early than, than late. For example, it's better to, to play the 2 and then the 11 go straight in here now, right? In fact, what I probably would do is play the 2, the 9, and then the 11. That leaves me with an insurance ball here, which is not blocked by the 9. It's better to do that than say, pop all these open balls uh, and these guys, and then go into the stack and not know, you know, no insurance, not know what's going to happen, and only have a few balls left to be able to work it out. So you're looking at opening up the, <coughs> the clusters as early as you can. get up for the nine the way I wanted so I'm just gonna go straight in. Because of the fact that my insurance ball here is now blocked, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna draw through the stack and bring the white back up like this over here and then I'll have a shot. I don't want one of the balls that's gonna come out over here or on the nine. Alright so I've got a shot on the four and the nine, I kind of overdrew it. I didn't want to get stuck in the stack. Yeah. And now let's look at what we got. Well, it didn't work out too bad. These guys are all open, except the 15 is kind of blocking um, a shot. No, it's not, I think we're good. They all go. So the only problem we have left is, is this. Do we have an opportunity to go in there? Not immediately, but I can get shape on the five if I get the right shape on the five, <clears throat> I can go into these guys. And one easy way to get shape on the five would be from the eight. So if I play shape for the eight now, I can get easy shape on the five to move these guys. The 12 and 14. So I've got my shape on the 8, 
as planned. So we're just looking where we want to, to leave this. So we want enough angle to sort of stun down and catch the edge of the 14 here. It's the way to play this shot. In, in fact, it's nice with these two balls here, if we just miss the 14, we're going to be on one of these guys to the center. And if we just catch it, we'll either be on the 14. If we hit it too full, we'll probably on the 12 or the 7. So we're looking at leaving a kind of half ball angle on the five, I would say, right here. A bit of a stretch for a short guy like me. I might, in a match situation, I might get my little position out. Okay, so I kind of over hit that a tiny bit, but it's all right. Okay, so we just want to check the angle we want to go into the rail here. The natural angle is kind of this, so we need a bit of right hand side to sort of bring it out at this angle. We need sort of that angle, so I double opened it up. Okay. I wish you do this, you know, ordinarily I would just do this by feel. I'm just kind of trying to demonstrate. Alright, well, we got the exact hit that we wanted on the ball. We got a half ball hit on the 14. We have a shot on the seven, we have a shot on the three, and I think basically everything goes now. We've got an option if we want to play the seven, go into the ten. If you look at what you've got, the ten will come off the edge of the thirteen and go up the table, it won't hit the fifteen, and the thirteen will go up off the rail. And something nice about this that I see, that you might not see, is playing this shot. It's going to send the ten up here and the 13 off the rail kind of up here, and it might end up as being a nice key ball if we get the pace right. Now we want to just stop the white here and we've got a shot on the 12. So it's basically a stun shot, just trying to judge the speed so that we get those balls to go where we want them. So the 13 went kind of perfect. It's a perfect key ball now. So now, basically, we're in the end game. So we're looking at what's the best way to finish this up. Well, my, the way I do this uh, <clears throat> is, to, is to work backwards. So 15 is my break ball. It's perfect. 13 is obviously my key ball. And this is a good key ball. I'll tell you why. Because I have these two balls right in line with the shot. So as long as I get straight in on one of these guys at the end, I can play a stun shot and I'm straight in on the 13. So it makes the end game an absolute doll. So then you've got to think, okay, I've got all these other balls. So say we choose the best one of the two is probably the nine, right? <coughs> if I can sort of come here on the nine, an easy way to get here would be to sort of would be stunning the 10 in somewhere over here and just sort of stunning up the table or playing from the three across or playing, yeah that's probably the easiest way the ten even goes in, in here all right? there's another way you could do this you could remove the nine early on and you could stop the three from this side into the side you get the perfect angling on, angling on the thirteen here, right? I, I really like that the reason being is I can play the ten to the side here and I can play a stop. And then I've got a stop on the three. Perfect. So all we've got to do to get to this end game is to finish it after putting the nine, uh, the 9, 14, and the 12, is to end up here to play a stop on the 10, right? So the easiest way to get here is from the 12. But the question is, do I have another ball to start off with? And the answer is not really, right? So we have to rethink. We can't leave the 12, we have to shoot the 12 first. It's not so easy to get shape on this from the 14 because you're coming across the line, right? So you might want to rethink on that one. Maybe um, actually getting shape on the 10 from the 9 is not such a bad option. The 9 goes in the side here. I can play 12, 14, leave an angle here on the 9. 10 even goes in that pocket. I can drop the 9 in and I can play a stop on the 10 in that corner, leave me the 3 into the side. So you see, <laughs> plenty of ways of doing this, 
So you have to kind of think through all those options and, and try and choose the one that you think is, is, is the, the most likely route that's going to allow you to succeed. So I think I'm going to go ahead and play like that. I'm going to shoot the 12, the 14, the 9 on the side, stop the 10, stop the 3, and I'm on the keyboard. In theory. Just want to draw this back up a little bit. And I'm still too short to shoot this. No, too short to shoot that as well. I need to get the rest. straight in so we might choose to follow through to this side of the tent. I think that's the right way to play that. The problem with trying to stop it now is that the path when you play a stun shot the path of white sticking is this, which is totally the wrong path to be travelling on to, to, to get on the tent. Had I been straight in on the nine I could have just stopped the white there and it would have been fine. So I'm gonna run through and play the ten in the other corner. Slightly under here, that. but it's good, and I like it for a lot of reasons. I can I can just drop this in, and the white's going to sort of come down here, which is perfect. And it, if I wanted to, if I wanted to get really clever, I could see I could look at the rack, and I could see roughly where I think this this break ball is is taking my white into the rack, and I can adjust that by just brushing off the fifteen if I want to. Right, so we more or less ended up as we wanted. We're straight in on the three. We're just going to stop the white, get straight in on the 13. Not quite straight in on the three, but it's, it's close enough. All right. And I'm right handed, so this is kind of nice. I'm just going to stop it there. Got plenty of angle. And that's the first wreck. Well, that took about 10 times longer than it usually takes me to run a wreck. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look now. Once you've had a lot of practice at this, you'll start to see, without even checking, from here, when you line up with a shot, you can see immediately which ball it's going to hit and where it's going to hit on the stack. But what you might find to begin with is it helps to just kind of look like this. And the obvious point here is you can see it's going to hit just the high side of the one. I can see that when I'm stood up here, I can see a mile away. <laughs> but it's just going to hit that open face of the one. So it's basically the same break shot as last time. Uh, the way I like to play it is just a medium pace shot with a bit of stun run through, one tip of kind of stun run through. Just like that. The reason I don't like to hit that too hard is sometimes you find that when the white comes back up here, all these balls will go to the side right, will come right back into the stack, and you're left with nothing. <laughs> So, in, in actual fact, I kind of hit that all right. I probably could have hit it a little bit softer even. But it worked out, and I have a couple of balls I can shoot. I can shoot the one, or I can shoot the 14. If I'm desperate, I can shoot the eight in the side. And that's about it. Generally, what you tend to find with this shot, if you play it like that, one ball will sort of just poke out the top of the rack 
which is what happened here. So, start another round. Well, I'm, I'm more or less forced into playing the 14 first. I could, I could shoot the 1 and go straight into the stack, but I'll tell you why I don't like that. A lot of people would do this. They see immediately they have a break ball, what the hell is up in the stack? Problem is, I'm going in this direction, I'm going to push all these balls towards this cluster. And I'm just going to probably make a bigger cluster and a bigger mess. I prefer to open these, these guys up from behind, from, from one of these two guys, if we can, or maybe one of these ones, we open this up. I even had a shot here, the five goes, so I can open them from the five. They're not even that big a cluster. Once the five's gone, the two goes. You know, so sometimes it's best just to have a little look at the cluster first before you decide whether you want to start colliding with balls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate first on sorting out this problem. It's not an easy one to sort out. I don't have an easy way to get on a ball immediately. But what I do have is this. I can drop the 14 in, leave the white over here, and leave myself an angle on the 12 to go right across there and into the 7. And then I've got security over here, I've got the 9 ball into the corner or the 11. The only problem with this is going to be stopping the white on the rail. Because so I've got quite a big angle on the 14. So I've got to really drop this in with a bit of drag. change of plan. I came straight on the 8, what the hell, I can play the 8, I can draw back closer to the rail and I'll have a better angle on the shot with everyone. Okay, so now I have kind of a perfect angle. I'm just going to sort of, this is a kind of a stun with a bit of follow into the 7. If you're left handed this shot would be a hundred times easier. I don't know if I can even play it like that. I've got one of these little butt extensions. I'm going to try that out. I think I can reach it with that. Let's have a look. Yeah, good. Alright, so I don't want to hit this too hard. I just want to make sure I hit the seven. shot was to hit the seven oh, and make the ball up, please. All right, so we've opened up that problem and we, we're in great shape now. We've got plenty of options from down on this rail to get up into the stack if we want to. And in fact, with these two insurance balls here over the pocket, I have a great opportunity right now. I've got two options. I can, I can play, I can shoot the 11 and draw right into the stack. The only problem with that is the white's kind of trekking into this edge of the five. So it might not do an awful lot. The other thing I could do is shoot the 11 and leave the white here and play into the stack from the, the seven off the red. And in some sense that, that looks nicer because from here I can come up through this gap and I'm pushing all these balls over here. And it, it's less likely to bother the one ball. So I'm going to play that. I like that option. Just over cinched it a little. I don't have much of an angle. But the shot's still on. So this is a real kind of stun. <coughs> the other option I've got here, I can, I can shoot the four off the rail and come in that way, but I don't like that so much. The other option now is to set up on the nine from the seven and go into them off the 9, maybe from like here. Let's see, I think I can get into them here. So I'm just going to shoot this with pretty, a, kind of a stun draw, pretty hard. Get into the balls. So as you see, I opened them up and I didn't move the one. 
the only thing that didn't open up really well was these two. Once I get rid of these guys, they both pass over here. So I think we're in the end game now. I've got my insurance pool as planned. So I've got to shoot the four now. And then I want to look at how I'm going to get out. So I think I need to remove these two as soon as I can. That's, that's obvious. And if I happen to get an angle on one of these two while I'm doing it to move the two or something, then we'll look at that later. So easy way to do this is to drop the four in, drop the nine in, and get up here. Nothing too drastic. Drop the four in, a little bit of check, just hold the white up. You have to drop the nine in here, the tiniest bit of inside English. I've got quite a bounce of cushions, but I don't have to hit that very hard. Okay, so I'm kind of slightly high up the five, slightly low with the ten. I don't really, thinking about it, I don't really see any advantage in going into the two. It's just going to push the six towards the one. Might screw up my break ball. So I'm just going to draw the five in off or I'll get shape on the ten. Straight in on the ten. Okay. So now, we only really have one option is to play shape on the three. The 13 passes the one into this pocket, I checked that earlier, forgot to mention that. It was quite important because we needed to be able to get rid of the 13. We, we could play it from over here, of course, but it's harder to get shape over there. So I think the end game is pretty obvious here. We draw the 10 in, we stop the three in, we play a little stop run on the 13, two, and then we play shape off the six. We're kind of forced into that end game. We don't have much, you know, of a choice. We've, up until now, we've been clearing up the problems down here. So this end game is more or less forced upon us. The only thing you have to do in this case, once you get to the 13, is kind of make sure that you finish low on the two. It makes it easier to get shape. If you if you're high, that's all right. You can kind of bump the six, but then you're not guaranteed good shape. So let's see what happens. 10, 3, 13, 2, 6. I've overhit that. Okay, so this is what happens. My cloth is super fast. <laughs> I've overhit this shot and I'm no longer in position. I want it to be here. And I'm here and I cannot stop for the 13 anymore. Right, so I have to change the plan. I kind of did that purpose. Well, I'm all right, as it happens, because I, I can drop this in and I can just push the 13 down here and I'll, be, I'll, be have, I'll have shape on the two. And then I can use the 13 as the key ball. If, can I just squeeze past without rubbing it? That's not obvious. It's pretty tight, actually. I might be able to. If I can, then we're in business. But the, the danger here is if you try and squeeze past and you just rub the edge, the light goes over here and it's game over, right? So you're better off making sure a full hit on the 13 here. So it's not really a run through, it's kind of a, an easy stun run. Okay. I thought I had to hit that at that speed to make sure I hit the 13. And now what I've done is I kind of push the 13 too far down. It's still an okay -ish key ball you can draw out like that. The other thing I could do here is I can shoot the two and then I can play position for the six in the side here. And as long as I'm, I mean, anywhere other than sort of straight in, it's fine. If, I, if I'm this side, I can, I can run through. If I'm this side, I can just follow up the table. The other option, if I weren't, see, because I'm straight in on the two, I'm kind of forced into that. I can play a little draw and then I can follow the six in here and come off this rail up to there and then and I'm playing shape like this. This is now my personal preference is you know business. I like my original idea so we'll go with that. Right so I'm basically just gonna get shape back here. Slightly on this side of the lines of the pocket. 
and then we'll be absolutely perfect. The way to do this with the angle I've left here is just to roll it through. It's going to kind of hit about here and I want to spin it out along that line there. Yeah. It's not too, too much spin, just a little bit. Enough to come along the right line. Okay. Well that worked out. We're kind of perfect on the six. We've got just the right side of the line from the pocket. Alright, so we're looking at kind of coming up along this line, anywhere along that line, and we'll be absolutely fine. And there you go, that's the second thing. That one also took ten times as long as it would have taken. Half an hour for two reps. Sorry about this. It's an interesting exercise for me. This. All right. So, break number three, or break four number three. It's a bit different this time. So this time we're looking at it. It's just hitting very slightly on the low side of the thirteen. So the white's going to be tracking that way, downwards, once I hit the 13. So in, the, in these instances, the way I like to play this is to draw it in with inside English. The white will tend to sort of come off this ball and, and do this kind of thing. You'll see. I'm sure you've all seen this a hundred times before. So this is a draw, it's a full draw with inside English. stuck on this rail. The only problem is that if it bounces out a little bit too far, it's not ideal, but we would have a nine. So let's see. Or you just go full blood and you play shape on the 13. If you want to get really fancy, you could draw it in with it loads of English and come up like this. The problem is, pockets on this table are as tight a set of pockets as you'll ever see. I like to just give the pocket a chance here. Drop this in, try and stop on the side rail. Did I get there? I didn't, but I'm on the 9 and the 13, as it happens. Okay. So I quite like either of these guys. I'm still not out of the woods yet. I'm still really on damage limitation. But I'll tell you something, what I like about the 13 I can just stop it and I'm straight in on the two, and I can immediately get to solving this problem down here. I can make the eight, and then from the six, I can come up into the stack if I want to. Got to be a bit careful about that, talk about that in a second. The other option would be to shoot the nine. Uh, I'll have two drums balls here, I've got the two to the corner, that's also quite nice. Only thing is, I've got a bit less of a pocket. And I can I can't see the pocket as well. At least with the 13, I can see the whole pocket. So I'm gonna play just a stun on the 13. That's all you gotta do. And now we're in prime position. So a couple of good shots. You've got to bear down on these shots, make sure you make them, get back into position, and then start thinking about the rack. 
So we're not forced to play the two here. We did play shape on it, but we also ended up with shape on the 10. Although I can't see how that's of any help to anybody. And we have a bit of a problem here, although not massive, because we can always end up playing the six from this side. The eight kind of acts as a bit of insurance of going to the stack. So we might even be looking at another type of shot here. We've got the option of playing the two, three in the side and then the seven. And from the seven we can drop down onto the six in such a way that we can then come up into the stack. I kind of like that as an option. Also removing the three so that opens this area above the stack for balls to go into when we come into the stack. I think that's going to be my maneuver. I'm going to just come straight on the three. So I'm just going to be a little careful here. Make sure I don't stun this too much of a run forward about half an inch. getting the angle on the six. So we've got two options. We've got the cushion first option from here. Position is easy, part of a little difficult. Or run in and just stun up here. Um, I like both but for different reasons. So if you if you come down here and you go into the stack from here, you're gonna have a slightly dead white. It's sort of going straight with no English. If I come, if I stop here, or roll a little bit, I can play this with follow, and that, what that'll do is it'll give the white some life. It'll come like this into the stack and spin off this way, which is kind of where I want to be because my insurance ball is over here. Okay, so that's the reason I would choose to play it that way. So this is really just a stun shot. Alright, so now which ball do I want to hit? Well, the perfect ball here, I'll tell you, is the edge of the four here. If I catch the edge of the four, it opens everything up. The 15 is going to go over there, these guys are going to go up the table, the white's going to come over here. So it's this kind of angle that we want. So we kind of got lucky because, well, unlucky because we messed up the nine, but lucky because we left the combination. So it's not the end of the world. And the four goes, so we're kind of good here. We've got no break ball yet. So what we probably want to do here is take the opportunity to get rid of this combination, leave an angle um, on the four to just push the, the 15 out as a break ball. Okay. And if you get that just right, the five will just drift a little bit down here, the white will stop here, and we'll have a shot either on the 14 or the five. So I basically want to leave that straight in on the nine. And the 11 in the corner. Just check the angle. I stun it here, I'm kind of perfect. Don't miss the 11, just make sure you've got the right angle here. Hopefully the 9 didn't cover my shot on the 4. It didn't, good. Okay, so this is all about judging the pace. We're coming off kind of this way with a little bit of follow. The problem with this shot is you want to put, hit it too hard because the white will sort of come around the top of the 15 and end up over here, which is no good. We want to hit it gently enough so that the 15 just comes out a couple of inches and hopefully we'll have a shot on five. No, I didn't hit that hard enough. Okay, so 
Luckily, I've got my insurance ball down here. I need to hit out a little bit harder, catch the 15 a little fuller, and then the white wouldn't have drifted down onto the five. But I have my insurance, so we're okay. So now you see why it was good to leave this ball earlier on when we had the option right at the beginning to play the two and then the eight. I left it because I knew it was an insurance ball. Okay, so we can shoot this. We can go inside two rails, back out, center table, we'll have, we'll have options, nine, 14, five. Stick on the 14. Okay, that's kind of alright. Could have been better, but it's alright. So we've got a shot on the 9. And we got a bit tangled up in the end game there. That happens from time to time. So we like our 15 as the break ball. In any case, we've got to play the 9 now. And if we can get straight in on the 5, we can just draw back and um, more or less play a stop on the 14. <coughs> That's kind of the way I see this. We'll see what angle we get on the 5. If we happen to get slightly low on the 5, we can draw right up here, and then it's dead easy to get shape. So I kind of want to come out to about this kind of place here. Stand off and on and off the cushion. No big deal. So I came high on the five. I can simply change the route I'm going to take. I can, I've got two options. I can stun off two cushions that come out along the line here. Or I can just follow it through. I quite like both, to be honest with you. Either, uh, either will work. It's kind of a, a position for the center of the table, whichever ways you, you look at it. Something like that. So I'm basically perfect. Oh, I've got a perfect angle on the 14. I can draw it a little bit back up table to here, which would be ideal.
let's proceed. Table number four. Break ball number four. Well, ironically enough, this is almost identical to the previous one. We're just going to hit the low side of the three before going into the one. So, the way I like to shoot these, draw, inside English. in the way of clusters, we even have a break ball, we just have to be a bit careful about how we go about removing the balls here, because they're all sort of blocking each other. So ideally we want to sort of get the white inside here, and then we can maneuver our way around. If we, as soon as we get rid of the 11, both of these guys go, if we get, get rid of the 5, these guys go. So we're looking at getting rid of kind of 11, 8, 5, more or less as soon as we can. But I actually have a shot on the 11. Do I? Ooh, it's close. No, I don't. The 6 is just in the way, I think. Oh, it's close. I wouldn't risk it. The 6 is kind of in the way, kind of not. You just want to avoid taking any risks. The only problem with playing position on, if I play shape on to the 10, I don't really have an angle to get out of. I'm jammed in by the 8 ball here. Right? The other option is to sort of play shape on the 9 and sort of stun into this gap here, and that'll get me shape on the 5. I sort of just stun down onto the 6, it'll push the 6 down a bit, and then I'll have shape on the 5. Provided I don't stop on the two. The other way to play that would be just kind of stun straight into the two, send it over here towards the seven, then I'll still have it, a shot on the five. What that might do for me is also it might create a break ball on my preferred side. That's an option. A better ball to do that from would be the 12. I've got the four is a kind of insurance ball over here if I do that. So this is the this is the most important part of this rack now is deciding how to do this. And it's not an obvious one. A lot of the time you're kind of forced into shooting in a particular way because that's the only option you have. But when you've got infinite options, it's always nice to choose the right one. I really want to get shape on the eleven. I'm kind of, you know, desperate to get shape on the 11. That, once I, that's the key. If I get shape on the 11, I've opened up the rack. I'm almost kind of desperately wanting this 11 to be on, but it's not. What I could do is I could draw the 3 and then try and get shape on the 11. If I overdraw it, I've got the 14. Kind of ugly. I think the best way to do this is, yeah, so the safest way to do this is just get shape on the 9. Probably push down onto the six and get shape, play shape for the five. That's going to be that's going to be the safest way, in my opinion. Of course, it's only an opinion after all. All right. So what I'll try and do is is it's basically a top spin shot onto the six, and it's going to kind of push the six down here. And if we get lucky, the six will just stay down here in the open, and I'll be on the five if we get lucky. If we catch the edge of the six, you've got to be a bit careful. I don't, you know, I've got to hit this at the right pace. If I catch the edge of the six, the light's going to go off down here somewhere. It could be ugly. I might even scratch. So you've just got to be careful to get the six in the right part. Yeah. I caught the two first, but it's no big deal. 
So I unfortunately didn't get the six to come right down, so I blocked the eight and the ten. That's all I was trying to avoid. But what it's done is it's got us inside here now, and now we can work. We can we can move the the five. We can kind of draw back, get shape on the eleven, and then the eight goes, and that opens everything up. If you don't get back far enough, we've got the seven to the side. We've got plenty of insurance here. So I would say the right shot here is, is to play the five and draw back for the eleven. Okay. Okay. That doesn't quite go. Right, so here, the key the keyboard now is the eight. I'm here with the eight. That'll open things up. I don't really have the ideal angle on the 11 to do that. I could have come back a couple more inches and I would have been perfect. I can still drop this in and it should be fine. Just drop it in dead weight. Okay. Got options, I can play the 12 or the 8. Unfortunately, I came straight in on the 8, which I didn't want to be. I wanted it to be sort of out here so I could just follow through onto the 10. 10 doesn't go past here. So I'm not going to shoot the 8 now, it's, it's kind of straight in and the white's going to drift off down here. So I've got my insurance ball. Well, it's not quite straight in. If I follow it, I'm going to probably collide with the 4. So it's not ideal either. I can try and sort of jack up and, and stop the white and then I can play the 8. And if I think I can just get past the edge of the 4, that might be the right option. You want to keep things as simple as you can. Let's have a look. I think I can just miss the edge of the four. Yeah, I might have hit that as well. I'll have to be straighter in. Right. We're not doing too badly. So the seven is open. Alright, we can. Uh, I don't think it's the right time to remove the 14 yet. That may end up being our key ball. We'll just see. Um, I think I, I want to keep working on that. This is not open yet, right? So I've got to get this into an open situation. We're not there yet. We don't have a break ball. I'm starting to think maybe one of these two balls are going to be the break ball, the 6 or the 10. I can shoot the four and, and come back across the table here and shoot the seven after that. The other option I've got here is to sort of shoot the four and come with inside English, collide into the two, push the one out. Problem with that is the only insurance ball is up table here. And if I just get the wrong side of the one, the two, I could hook myself up. You know, you know. So let's not bother with that idea. We're just going to come over here. Stayed a little higher just to be sure of staying away from the ball. Okay, so we're getting there now. We can shoot the seven. Both of these guys go to this center pocket, and it's going to push the 13 down here. So we've got three insurance balls on this shot. There is another shot here, actually. I can follow this through onto the 10 and I have a 6 afterwards. And I quite like that because that's opening everything up. I think that's my shot. Drop the 7 in, roll onto the 10. Alright, Bob's your uncle. Now things are starting to look better. We need a break ball. The 8 could be our break ball. 10 could be our break ball. 13 is no good. These two are in the stack. We could still look at maybe developing one of these guys. Can't quite get enough draw on that to push the 8 into a nice position. 13 has to go. The 8 has to go because I need to get rid of the 13. So I 
can't really keep the eight. I can't justify keeping the eight. Unless I shoot the eight to 13 from over here. What else could we got here? I could kind of shoot the eight and come up here like that into the two, play the 13. Don't like that really either. It's not, it's not wonderful. The other option I've got maybe is if I get the right angle on the eight, I can follow through and just click the underside of the 13 and sort of push it up a little bit. I think that's the best option. Okay, so we want to just be a tiny bit low of Australian on the eight. Soft enough. I might just 